The character of Scott single-handedly saved the Pokemon franchise just by existing. Let me explain why. Greetings trainers, Kuroblitz here and welcome back to another video. So today I'm here to talk about one of the greatest interesting things about the overall Pokemon franchise, not just the anime today. Today I'm talking about the whole franchise and how the franchise is what it is today thanks to one little tiny feature, tiny as it is, it's the biggest one ever yet in the post game of Pokemon Emerald and that is the Pokemon Battle Frontier. We all know what the Battle Frontier is. Facilities that were made to one get their own skills besides you know battling with your neighbor via, via link cable and whatever. But the thing about the Pokemon Battle Frontier is that just by existing it saved the franchise from ruin. Like, you know, many other franchises who are still wanting to be continued, like Pikmin or Metroid or whatever. Pokemon stood their ground after the first decade thanks to the Battle Frontier. And this was a talk that I was having with many of my friends and I want to share my thoughts about you as well because we need to think about this. The Battle Frontier is what allowed for Gen 4 to be a thing. So that's what I'm here to talk about, folks. Today I'm here to talk about how this post-game saved the Pokémon anime. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So this whole thing began with a talk that I was having about how the writers of Pokémon Journeys they most likely didn't know if, because of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus, if Journey is going to have three years or four years, because that's about with Advanced Generation. In Advanced Generation. They want it to be three years, but, you know, um, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl was meant to be for 2005 since Nintendo DS was a 2004 console, but they postponed. But because of Pokemon Emerald, it allowed for the anime to go for one more year, so that alone says how Owen had to be restructured. Owen, no, AG. Owen was okay, but AG had to create the Battle Frontier for Kanto. Um, so that they had to restructure that. And uh, the whole ear of filler, quote unquote, in Sinnoh, no, that was because, well, they didn't know that Art Gold Soul Silver was going to come out. So they had to they had to create filler, quote unquote. Even though we did have filler, we had the Twin Leaf Festival, we had the Art Gold Soul Silver arc, the 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 Galactic finale. People say it's filler, it really isn't. Any anyways, there are some, but in all regards, it really isn't. But yeah, and because of the remakes of Sinnoh, they didn't know if Journeys or Generation 8 was going to last 4 years because Gen 3 and 4 lasted 4 years because of Fire Red and Leaf Green Arc also Silver. However, Gen 6 only lasted 3 because of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire because we didn't have, you know, a Pokemon Z. And I really hope that Journeys at least has 4 years because that way in the midpoint around Journeys 95, Journeys 100 we can be introduced to the character of Hop, that's the main rival of the Generation 8 game, Sword and Shield, because Barry was introduced in the middle of Diamond and Pearl in the anime and uh, Barry was heavily focused on the, on the, on the, you know, the second half, like they had to bench Conway for two years to give, you know, Barry focus, but hey, at least we got him, so I hope the same treatment for Hop. It is not the best solution, but it's a solution nonetheless, and uh, giving how Journeys, you know, they have, instead of being point system in the PWC, they have a rank system, and I hope that we actually do have two Pokemon World Coronation Series, two PWCs, Ash losing to Leon, having to start all over again, luring more trainers to him. It seems logical at this stage, it's a compromise it'll have to do, again, it's not the best solution, but at least it's one solution. It will be very unorganic into the narrative, but in some way it could be basically having a second Pokemon World Coronation series in the Pokemon Journeys anime, it will feel like 
the Battle Frontier after Ashes Hoenn League. It's like, you know, a, a surprise and maybe a welcoming one for many of them, for many of viewers. Because, like I said, Diamond and Pearl was meant to be in 2005, not 2006, because Nintendo DS was in 2004, the game where Fire Red and Leaf Green and Emerald were released. So, they took their time, and having Emerald's Battle Frontier, it gave AG that extra year, and with that, they have the chance for Ash to get Septile and not just have Grovile like how he had Bayleaf instead of Meganium. And it gave May the second try in contests because it was in a second region. Like, Dawn did not have that privilege um, of having, you know, a second try in contests, and May defeated her main rival, so. Yeah, even Dawn wasn't able to defeat Zoe. Regardless, if Di here's the thing, if Pokemon Emerald had no Battle Frontier, the game wouldn't be that famous. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they would have been the undeniable superior version of Owen games, and by proxy, they would have automatically be better than the remakes that are Art Gold and Soul Silver. As for the advanced generation itself, I don't know what they could go like if they actually wanted to continue for a fourth year to go into until 2006 for the 10th anniversary of the franchise. Maybe Ash would go to do the Colosseum and Gale of Darkness plot with Owo and Shadow Lugia. Um, again, we don't know what uh, if in a, even an actual for. I would love the idea now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, this is totally unscripted, by the way. <laughs> I mean. Whatever. Um, but I would love the idea of, you know, Ash... Ash actually, instead of doing the Battle Frontier, going to Ore and doing the Cypher plot. Because Owo and Shadow Lugia? That would be the shit! Anyways, um, if Diamond and Pearl was indeed released in 2005, instead of Nintendo taking their time and using the Battle Frontier of Emerald to have people trade with each other and train with each other and to give the anime more time. If DP was released in 2005, we would not have spin-offs because 2005 was the Hero of Gale of Darkness, right? Maybe we would not have a sequel to Colosseum. Maybe we would not have, have, you know, maybe Mystery Dungeon and Ranger, they would be postponed or never created. Can you imagine a world where Pokemon Ranger and Mystery Dungeon were never spin-offs? Because Dash, Dash was shit. Puzzle Piece, Stadium, Snap, they are having resurgences and people love it. Even the trading card, you know, from the trading card game from the, from, from the Game Boy Color. But they were low, they were, they were low and very, you know, very niche tiers of, you know, spin-offs. Mystery Dungeon and Ranger, they kickstarted the spin-off franchise. Maybe we will not have Pokemon Go, we will not have Conquest, we will not have a sequel to Snap. So, yeah, um, and if you think about it, Emerald's post-game existing, the Battle Frontier existing, that also gives a great closure for the classic era of the Pokemon Adventures manga Pokedex holders, because they all come together, all 10 of them come together to face a great foe in the Battle Frontier. So it's the Avengers Endgame of the Pokemon Adventures manga. If there was no Battle Frontier, people would have not started to train competitive in the facilities and, you know, just have occasional spars and battles with their friends via link cable. Like, they would not train competitive, they would not breed, Volt Tackle would have not been, been a thing because it, it's a moving Pokemon Emerald, like, Volt Tackle will not be a thing. Can you imagine? Because Pikachu learned Volt Tackle in the anime in a daycare center. Can you imagine Pikachu without Volt Tackle? It's a crime. It's a crime. Not to mention that if they rush the process of the Nintendo DS, like, maybe you could have wireless, like those wireless adapters. We could have those wireless adapters, but uh, not actually communicating until the, until the world and maybe Gen 4 would be even more sluggish and slow. Um, yeah, like, the Battle Frontier allowed for Game Freak and Weavermore to actually care and develop for Gen 4, because if the Battle Frontier didn't exist, it, we most likely would not have, you know, we would not have Wi-Fi, we would not have GTS, we would not have, um, 
even the VGC tournaments because the tournaments until 2009 until Platinum it was only for trading cards so can you imagine a world where we not have a VGC tournament and therefore Journeys doesn't have the World Coronation Series because that's the World Championships can you imagine that a world tournament where people just play cards and not, you know, video games because video games aren't a thing? Heck, maybe the cards would be discontinued because Pokemon would even stop existing. The Battle Frontier gave the Pokemon Company International that extra year that saved the franchise from peaking in Generation 3. Gen 4, Wi-Fi, the online fandoms, forums, websites. YouTube, Twitter, whatever, even even Reddit, uh, Serbi forums, Bulba Garden, Gen F Battle Frontier allowing for Gen 4 to be more polished in terms of Wi-Fi, it's what makes everyone in the world connected. It all stems from that one post-game island existing. Can you imagine a world where Pokemon never reached their 10th anniversary? Like, Pokemon stopping in advanced generation, no Dawn in Imad and Pearl, no Iris in Best Wishes, no Serena in X and Y, etc. A world where Art Gold and Soul Silver doesn't exist. Because there's no Gen 4, there's no Johto remakes, because all Johto Pokemon are in Ore and are in the Sevi Islands. A world with no Unova, neither the plot with Team Plasma or the World Tournament where you battle all of the gym leaders. The Pokemon anime would have to be slightly different, like Ash ending in Owen, I don't think it would be the, the thing. They would have to promote Fire Red and Leaf Green to some extent, so maybe they would have to make Ash re-challenge the Kanto League in some capacity, like, you know... I, I can see it, like, instead of battling the Battle Frontier, he re-challenges the Kanto League. And uh, the thing is, he will most likely become the Indigo Plateau Champion, but he peaks too early for his own good. Because the anime also peaked too early for his own good. Which means that we will not have characters such as Paul, Halan, Hao, Gladion, Kukui. We will not have gimmicks like the Gems, the Magus, the Z-Moves, Gigantamax. We would not even be here discussing the shit show and the mixed bag that Pokemon Journeys is. Heck, because there is no Gen 4, there is no Lucario movie, there is no aura plot. Imagine a world where Ash has no aura. Nothing makes him special. No bonds with legendaries whatsoever. A world where Pokemon would end in Fire Red and Leaf Green would be such a waste. And this is why I stand Gen 3, and this is why I love Hoenn, Advanced Generation, whatever more. It's all thanks to the fact that they saved the franchise. The Battle Frontier, just by existing, created everything that we know today. You, you, me talking to you, you listening to me, it's all possible because, you know what? YouTube was in 2005, the year after Pokemon Emerald. Let's Plays, Analysis, Theories. The community is what it is today, thanks to the Battle Frontier. So when Masuda didn't place that in the Hoenn remakes, that's just disrespectful. And he will most likely do it with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Because, let's be faithful. If you want to outsource that guy to do something great, outsource him to do Let's Go Johto. Like, I don't know, Let's Go Entei, Let's Go Raikou, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the Battle Frontier, Scott the man, Scott the goddamn man, he saved the franchise. Gen 3 made Pokemon what it is today, and people say that the Dexit from Ruby and Sapphire was the downfall. No, people. You saw the bigger picture now. You need to stand Gen 3, and also the Battle Frontier. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have yourselves a 
on an awesome day.